You listen to KT STFM and the Secret City Geek Lab. I'm Alan A. Moving along, we're getting away from Iron Man, and we're moving to video games. We've got two reviews today, and the first one is Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. This standalone download is a new edition of the Far Cry series that transports gamers to a retro-futuristic, neon-soaked post-apocalyptic 2007, where they battle mutant dragons and evil cyborgs to forge a path up to peace. Tough work, but a total blast. You play Sergeant Rex Cult, Mark IV, Cyber Commando, the year is 2007, and Earth has been ravaged by nuclear war, which erupted in the 90s. The East versus West conflict has raged for generations, and humanity continues to struggle to progress after a disastrous decade. New paths for peace must be found, and the U.S. cyborg army may have found a solution. A powerful bioweapon on a distant island. Your mission is to gather information and figure out what the hell is going on. This game is rated M and is available on Xbox 360, PS3, and PC. And our own Joey Shope comes in with the review. I'm here with Joey Shope, and we're talking Far Cry 3. Blood Dragon. Blood Dragon. You play this on the Xbox 360. That's right. This game is pretty interesting because it's a DLC game that stands for downloadable content. Uh, for those of you who don't know, when you, you can buy like a regular game nowadays, a lot of times they'll have extra features that you can pay for later. But what's different about Blood Dragon is you don't need the original Far Cry 3 disc in order to play it. Okay, and how much is it? Uh, it's about fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars. That's a pretty good price. Yeah, it's, a, it's definitely a good price. Lengthwise, it's uh, it's pretty good size for DLC. Most of the time, they're pretty short. You know, maybe like two or three chapters in a in a little story. But this one's a pretty decent size. All right, tell me the story of Far Cry Three. So this is a nineteen eighties look into the future. Uh, what people imagine the eighties the future would be like, and this is uh, uh, their vision of it. All right. So if you're living in the eighties. What you imagine the future's gonna be oh, okay. is this. It's a post post apocalyptic world. Okay, and uh, what's happening? Are you. What are yeah, you fighting? Uh, so you're essentially. It's a 1980s cartoon, essentially. I, 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 I compare it a lot to G.I. Joe uh, based on like how it looks, like the fact that you're shooting laser beams and like everything's got like neon and like sharp and fast and all that stuff. Okay, so you're just fighting bad guys? Uh, that, well, not just bad guys, but you're also fighting dragons, which are. Uh, creatures that uh they have a couple a couple different styles uh some of them fly some of them even work for the bad guys but uh one of the things that far cry 3 had was all these wild animals that you could hunt and uh take down uh that comes back in this game too you can hunt the different types of uh, dragons and uh defeat them and then get their stuff and get a lot of experience uh in far cry 3 what you what you did for uh, a lot of the equipment you get or upgrades is you hunt down specific animals that kind of makes a return you hunt down uh, several dragons to get uh, better experience points to uh, level up and all that stuff to make it more. This game feels a lot more RPG ish uh, because in Far Cry Three you had the you had like almost like a skill tree. You could choose to upgrade this spot or you can choose to upgrade this. Uh, this one's a lot more streamlined. Uh, it makes the choices for you. So uh, level five you get an up upgrade of health that you don't have an option. At level ten you get an upgrade in uh, different weapons. But each level you get certain upgrades. Okay, so is this a giant sandbox? Or are you just going from place uh, to place? It's not a sandbox, uh, per se, because there is a, it's pretty story based. You can walk around, you can shoot a bunch of, uh, different kind of animals, but it's more story based, and that's, uh, what kind of, what I kind of liked about it. See, my problem with Far Cry 3 was how long it was. It was a very long game, and there's certain points where it's like just dragging on, and you're like, okay, can I please just move on with the story? This one, you feel that a little bit, but because it's just, as a shorter D DLC, you don't feel it entirely. You can, it's, it's still a lot of fun. It's a, it's really a stylistic kind of game, uh, very 80s influence with neon and, like, I don't know, bright lights. Okay, how's the gameplay uh, for a beginner to uh, to an expert? I never played any of the Far Cry 1 or 2. I only played 3. Uh, it can be a little challenging at first, but I feel like the, uh, the DLC is easier. Uh, it's a standard uh, first-person shooter. You're walking around, each shooting people. Uh, some of the cool aspects is you have a bow and arrow, much like the original game. Uh, that's a lot of fun to use. If you're an expert or uh, you're a regular gamer, you have no problem. If you're new, then it might take you a while, but you get used to it. What sets this apart from others that, that would make you want to play? Uh, the, for th Mostly because you don't need a Far Cry 3 for this game. Uh, for so example, it's the price, you're saying? Yeah, it's... Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, you get kind of the experience of Far Cry 3 in a different style, but not in a $60 game. So from a scale from 1 to 10, how would you rate Far Cry 3? Blood Dragon. 8. 8. All right, very good. This is... Alan and Joey for Secret City Geek Lab video game review.